Tanjeet Nagra. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair, uh, councillors. I appreciate the opportunity to speak with you today. However, I wish it was under better circumstances. I stand in front of you today wearing many hats, figur figuratively, of course, not literally. I am a graduate student at the University of Manitoba, enrolled in the Asper MBA program. I am the Vice President Academic of the University of Manitoba Graduate Students Association, here representing over 3,000 students. I am also the Vice Chair of the Fort Richmond and University Heights Neighborhood Association, which of course represents the neighboring a residential community that's neighboring the University of Manitoba. And amongst other hats I wear, I'm also a former president of the University of Manitoba Students Union, and I served from 2016 to 18. In fact, it was my executive team and I that implemented the UPASS program at the U of M in 2016. Around the same time, the City of Winnipeg and Winnipeg Transit rolled out the PEGO card, which we implemented in 2017 after a year of uh, having a paper pass system. In 2017, as it was easier to track activations with the PEGO card, we were able to see that we had over 17,000 activations of the UPASS, uh, and that was at the University of Manitoba alone. Over 17,000 students were utilizing the program during the first couple, couple years, and this number has since grown. <clears throat> we also kept note of any feedback that we heard about the program, positive or negative, and we shared this, uh, these updates with Winnipeg Transit and with the city. And in fact, Mr. Chair, I remember meeting with your predecessor and former city councillor and former chair of this committee, Marty Morantz, uh, and I remember having uh, several conversations with him uh, around when we were uh, developing the ideas of having a summer UPASS extension as well. I mention this because I want to remind you that the students have been discussing the, uh, the continuation of this program since its implementation in 2016. It's nothing new. At this time, I am deeply concerned about what has occurred within the past week. After City Council appro approved a mandate of continuing the UPASS at a rate of 2450 more per, per semester, we were told to hold referenda of our students, which costs money, takes up resources and time. Um, so you held their referendum and over 9,000 students voted and with an approval rating of 78% to continue the UPASS at the higher rate and at its current term, of course. So just to, just to draw a comparison and to give you a bit of an analogy. So similarly, the city of Winnipeg held a referendum in 2018 in the election. So among, uh, in addition to voting for your mayor, city council, and school trustees, you also vote in a referendum on whether or not we should open up Portage and Maine. Winnipeggers overwhelmingly voted no. So I'm sure if city council proceeded to open up Portage and Maine, those people that voted no might be a little confused. Similarly, the 78% of students that voted to save the UPASS are also confused as to why the city wants to cut it. The U of M Graduate Students Association uh, was scheduled, a referendum was scheduled after UMSUs. And once the September to, eight, uh, September to April pass was deemed a more favorable option by the undergraduate students at UMSU, the UMGSA was told to remove the summer extension off our referendum question. And this was on February 20th, so about three weeks ago from today. We were not told at this time that we shouldn't even bother asking the question. We weren't even given a phone call or an email prior to the EPC meeting last week on Friday to let us know that the UPASS was being proposed to discontinue. This, Mr. Chair and members of the committee, is why I believe us, the students, were misled and why I believe the City of Winnipeg was negotiating with us in bad faith, plain and simple. That being said, I know that when the dis discontinuation of the U Pass is mentioned, the low income bus pass is mentioned as an alternative. Now, I want to be clear that I support a low income bus pass. However, I think comparing it to the U Pass is like comparing apples and oranges. The two are not of the like. Would some students qualify for low income rate? Absolutely, yes, I'm sure they would. However, if it was truly an issue of affordability, the UPASS rate is still a better option for those that would qualify or consider it as low income. I would also like to raise a concern about the definition of newcomer in the budget documents. Based on the vague definition, it's not clear to me if international students, which represent almost a third of the students at U of M, would qualify as low income. However, they do qualify for UPASS, as Mr. Sanderson, uh, de uh, delegate, mentioned before. 
These are students who file taxes like everyone else, but are not eligible for all the same services and supports as the rest of us. And I'm sure you're probably aware that they also pay almost three times the amount of tuition. International students are already heavily investing into our local economy. Many of them have families back home that are struggling to make ends meet in order to support their child's education here in Manitoba and Winnipeg. These same students, in addition to investing into our economy, advance our scholarly and research works, enhance our workforce, and build community. International students are currently utilizing emergency loans and hardship programs the most, and they need our help to keep transit affordable and sustainable. I would also like to raise the issue of students who receive financial support for their education, whether that be through student loans or Indigenous students who receive band funding. As the UPass is universal and, is a, and it is a fee charged in tuition, many of these students can get support to cover the cost of UPass, which might not be the case even for those that qualify for the low income rate, as that, that would be a separate fee. I would like to note that we made more advances at the U of M since implementing the UPass, which included working with the city um, and the university to open up uh, UM Cycle, which is a bike kiosk for repairs located uh, on the Fort Garry campus, which is open to all community members, and it's been very successful. And we were also able to create flexible parking options for those who still required a vehicle to get from campus, get to and from campus because of the lack of transit service in their new developed neighborhoods or for those student parents who rely on their vehicle to get their children to and from uh, daycare, so the student parents. For a moment, I would also like to take my student leader hat off and, uh, and my, put my Fort Richmond resident hat on. And I know that I can speak for many of my neighbors who are happy to see less cars parked on their residential roads and less cars parked on lawns. And with that, I'm alluding to the ongoing issues with illegal rooming practices in the area, which is a whole separate issue that I'm sure you're aware of. In summary, I would urge members of the committee to actually work with students in good faith and find ways to save the UPass program. It is not just for those 20,000 plus students at the University of Manitoba who utilize and support the program, but for drivers on the road that don't want further congestion and traffic. For the residents of Fort Richmond and University Heights who don't want their residential streets filled with cars because U of M doesn't have enough parking available. And last but not least, probably the most important point, do it for those that care about our planet. I urge you members of the committee to represent your constituents who are either students at the U of M, Uni University of Winnipeg, Red River College, and those who care about a sustainable future for Winnipeg. Thank you, merci, miigwech. Thank you, um, Councillor Sharma. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Ms. Negra, for being here today for your, for your presentation. Uh, specifically, you represent graduate students. What are you hearing from that group since the budget was tabled last Friday? Thank you for the question, Councillor Sharma. So since then, um, I know Mr. Fleischer uh, that spoke uh, before me today uh, mentioned the letter that was circulated by the city planning students. These are graduate students from the University of Manitoba and future leaders in, in planning for the future of our city. Um, I, it's been widely spread online. They are not happy with the decision. I'd be happy to send it to all of you if you haven't seen it yet. Um, amongst that, I've received a lot of personal emails and letters uh, and calls from students as well. Um, I alluded to international students earlier I remember reading um, reading a note from a student that said that they when they come here they don't really know many people they feel alone they feel segregated and with the, with the UPass with an affordable transit option they have the ability to participate in the campus community and campus culture which leads to a positive effect on their mental health as well so the UPass it helps in, in the sense of uh, us being a commuter campus, uh, but it also helps people build community and helps students build community on campus. And I think that's really important because that leads to other positive externalities as well. Thank you for the question. Thank you. Oh, Councillor. Um, just piquing my interest, if you had to choose between when you take transit for affordability or are you taking transit for climate action and you only had to choose one, which one would it be? I don't think that's a fair question with all due respect. Okay. Any other questions? No. Seeing none, thanks for the presentation. Thank you.